I grew up with no money. We couldn't afford university. I had super grades, marks, whatever you want to call them. But you had to be good in a foreign language to get a scholarship back then. And I never was. I, I still can't learn languages. So my mother had said to me when I dreamed of going to Africa, uh, and everybody laughed at me. I was 10 years old at the time, and World War II was raging, no money. She said, if you really want something, you're going to have to work really hard and take advantage of opportunity. Above all, never give up. If everybody every day takes a little bit of time to think about the consequences of the actions we take, what do we buy? Where did it come from? How many miles did it travel? Did it cause suffering to humans like child slave labor? Did it cause suffering to animals like uh, factory, factory farms? Did it harm the environment like intensive agriculture uh, with chemicals and so forth, or GMOs? If we start thinking like that, we alone, I alone, isn't, it's nothing. But say it's a hundred people and then a thousand and then a million and eventually a billion people all making the right ethical choices. That's going to lead to rather major change, and kids get it. We must learn to live in peace and harmony with each other between nations, religions, cultures. That's why I'm so delighted to see on the town hall there, refugees welcome. That's, that's the best thing I've seen in recent, because you know, you read about what Australia is doing, and it's utterly shocking. And you read about the people building walls and these poor people, many of them fleeing un unimaginable horror for the war in Syria, Afghanistan. The first big problem, alleviating poverty, is possible. We've shown it. We're in six different African countries now being successful. The next problem, which is much harder to solve, is the unsustainable lifestyle of everybody else. And that's not even including the super rich. Let's leave them aside there in their own um, awful category, but just ordinary people like us. We all have more than we need. You know, going back to let's choose, let's make ethical choices in what we buy, but also ask, do we need it? And that's where you come up against the economists who are saying we must have unlimited economic development, but in a planet with finite natural resources, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> no, I never, I couldn't. You couldn't. It's bad enough looking at photographs we can grow out of. And part of our goal of our youth program, Roots and Shoots, is helping children to understand that, you know, it's not only us who have personalities, minds and emotions. Animals feel as we do. That's changed because when I first got to Cambridge to do a PhD, that was 1961, it was seriously thought in, in science that the difference between us and other animals was one of kind. It was. It was a sharp line, probably to do with us having a soul, but we were also supposed to be the only tool maker, you know, so I was told I shouldn't have given the chimps names, they should have had numbers, and I couldn't talk about personality, mind or emotion, because that was unique to us. But I'd learned from my dog as a child that that wasn't true. So, you know, bullfighting, it, it's very clearly, um, there's always a, a, you know, a series of, of um, levels of, Cruelty. And if I was asked to choose to have the life of a bull with that horrible ending, or a cow in an intensive farm, or a pig, I think I'd choose the bull because the cows in these intensive farms, their lives are brutality every single day. That doesn't mean you condone the bullfighting because you're, you're condoning something which which is appealing to something horrible in us. My main purpose is to give people hope that if we take action, it's not too late. 
and the main message every single one of us makes a difference every day and we have a choice as to what sort of difference we're going to make and the reason that I'm more active now is you know say life is that long this is the plan for my life I don't know what it is but I do know and I increasingly know as I get older that every year I'm closer to whatever this end is and there's so much to do and less and less and less time to do it so I have to 